Hmm. I don't know what I want to listen to today. Hmm. Star Wars, that's good. Uh, they can orchestra, but... Yeah, let's do that. Oh, sorry. I was listening to The Revenant. I was listening to the score of The Revenant. This is actually one of my favorite scores, of, and one of, also one of my favorite movies that I've seen in a long time. This is actually directed by Alejandro Iñárritu, and the score is by Ryuchi Sakamoto and Al Alba Noto. I really like this score, however, it's not one of my top ten scores, and that's actually what I'm here to talk to you today about. I'm here to talk to you about my top ten favorite scores, and I'm going to give you a little caveat. None of these composers are twice named on this list. So if I say Hans Zimmer, he's not going to be on this list. Neither is John Williams, etc, etc. So there's only going to be one film or film franchise that's going to be on this list. So let's start off with my number 10 pick and my number 10 score, which is Brick. And this is actually the newest thing on my list. I actually recently saw this for the first time and it took a lot out of me to put this on my list. This is something that I thought was a fantastic movie First of all, it's a fantastic film, uh, thriller slash noir. It's, it's just a really great Canadian film directed by Ryan Johnson. And the score is by Nathan Johnson. And I really enjoy that because Nathan Johnson is uh, really close to my name, Nathan Jones. However, let me talk to you a little bit about the score and why I like it so much. The score of this movie is just so interesting. It's so interesting that it, that's why it's on my list. It's ca it captured my attention the first time I saw it. The intri intricate uh, combination of bells, whistles, chimes, it just, it, on top of string instruments and just the eerie nature of this movie, it reminded me of a lot of Memento. You're trying to piece together this, this thing that's going on. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, he lost his girlfriend, Emily, who, who died somehow. And speaking of Emily, Emily's theme in this the sound the soundtrack, the score, is just a fantastic song and there's also just several songs throughout called Emily's Theme that just have a reinterpretation of it as the story progresses and it's something that I really enjoy. And each of these songs, these have a certain characteristic to them when a lot of these characters are introduced. And I something I really enjoy about this this movie is that each of them kind of accents the character themselves or kind of plays on what they could be potentially, but it also hides a lot of them as well you don't really know the true intentions of some of these characters and that's something that the score really likes to, to play the game with you. That's particularly um, noticeable on some of Emily's theme and also Kara's theme. So those are some of my favorite uh, pieces of the score. So let me move on to my number nine pick and that pick is Amelie. And Amelie, uh, I'm gonna have to look at my notes because it's in French. The person who directed it was Jean-Pierre Nouviet. Jun Juniet, I don't know. Anyways, the person who did the score, however, was Jan Tiersen, and his score was fantastic. And I'm going to be reading this because I want to tell you how many instruments are actually in this. All right, so we have this this combination of all these instruments, and it just it sounds so grand. There's piano, there's toy piano, carillon, uh, carillon. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Banjo, mandolin, guitar, harpsichord, vibraphone. Accordion, bass, melicata. There's so many things in this in this score, and there's so many instruments in this. And it just it seems so whimsical and oddly charming, and that's something that's really I love about Amelie. I've only seen this movie twice, and honestly, that's why both Brick and Amelie are near the bottom of the list, is because I've only recently seen these these films. However, the scores just intrigue me so much. This is such a whimsical whimsical film and the music really accents that it's a very French French movie I know that sounds kind of cliche however you can just hear the music and you'd be like oh that sounds French it's almost like going to a, a French carnival and that's what I love about this movie and I love the score of this movie 
I think that uh, Jan Tiersen did a fantastic job here, and I honestly cannot wait to watch this movie in the future. All right, now we're going on to number eight, and this is actually my favorite horror movie of all time, The Thing. And I did a horror... I did a, my top ten horrors a couple of months ago, maybe three or four. I don't know how long ago I did that. But I said Exorcist was my number one, and The Thing was number two. I've kind of switched that around. Uh, Ennio Morricone and John Carpenter kind of combined their works to here. If you know the Thing's theme, like the theme song from the uh, from Thing, it's just it's so eerie and also just so perfect for this movie. It goes something a little bit like this, and I'm going to butcher it. Dun dun. Dun dun. Dun dun. This movie and the soundtrack fit together so well. It's in this desolate Antarctica, and where there's very few very few people there and there's like no life obviously so it seems like an almost like an alien like planet and so the music and the score accents that very well especially the main theme of course but there's also the score itself just adds adds tension to this film this movie is another kind of whodunit just like Brick was it's you really trying to figure out what's going on and the music just really builds on that there's also a combination of string instruments and woodwinds that just kind of make this entire picture just really eerie and you don't really know what's going on and that's something that I really enjoyed about this score. The Thing is one of my favorite movies of all time and I cannot wait for you to check it out and let's move on from there to number seven. Alright number seven is Blade Runner and this is directed by Ridley Scott and the music is by Vangelis and if you've ever heard this soundtrack you know how iconic it is. It's almost more iconic sometimes than the movie itself from what I've heard from other people. Now I've only seen this about four or five times and I've seen different versions obviously but the music is just so ethereal and it's like a, just like with the thing this movie fits the soundtrack fits so well and now you're probably going to see this as a theme a lot of these soundtracks really fit together for whatever tonal aspect that the film is trying to portray and that's what the thing is for me the thing and that's what Blade Runner is to me and Vangelis because it's such a desolate kind of future dystopian film that you get this strange combination it sounds like tangerine dream this weird combination of ethereal electronic music and and kind of jazz and this is strange combination of a lot of the things that are happening on the screen and a lot of things that are happening off the screen that you just you're contemplating this and honestly the the soundtrack kind of just sticks with you after you watch the movie now some of my favorite songs on this, one particular, is Memories of Green, and it's got a beautiful piano interlude kind of mixed in with some strings and some electronic dissonance, and that's something that I just, I think it's, it's almost like a daydream, and that's something about this movie, you'll see a lot of dream aspects, dream sequences, and the music accents so well. So I can talk days about Vangelis and how great Blade Runner is. So let's move on from there. Let's talk about number six. My number six pick is... My number six picks is Interstellar. And this I actually have the movie soundtrack for right here because I love this soundtrack so much. Uh, just like I was talking about with The Thing and also Blade Runner, this movie and the soundtrack and the score by Hans Zimmer is just so perfect. It... it combines a lot of the 2001 A Space Odyssey combinations here and it just really makes it just seems like it fits the opening the opening song Dreams of the Crash it builds up it just it sounds like a clock ticking and that's what this movie's all about it's about temporal and spatial relations um, this space and time plays with each other and it and it really just it kind of pulls on your heartstrings with the emotion of obviously Matthew McConaughey and, and the characters in this movie and that's something that the soundtrack really, really hits you with. It's one of the ones that I revisit so much because the music itself is just so magical. It just seems like it builds up and then it calms down. It's like peaks and valleys. It's one of those things that, honestly, I can't really explain. It just it hits you correctly. And some of the, my favorite songs on here, I'm reading from my favorite song list here, is Dreams of, Dreaming of the Crash, what track is called Stay, Detach, TikTok is also a fantastic song here as well. This is a fantastic soundtrack and I highly recommend this. This is even for people who don't like movies. This is just very nice study music and honestly something that you could probably put on in the background and just really just relax. There's a lot of elements of the calm before the storm kind of happening. And there's some really loud moments in this with the organ. Hans Zimmer is actually pretty uh, known for that. And it just builds up and then it just relaxes again. It's just, it's a great combination and just a great film soundtrack in general. 
So let's move on from there. So I know how I told you this is all about movie sound, movie score. I know how I told you this is all about movie scores. So this is actually the only one on the list that I kind of break the rule for because it's a movie soundtrack. And that is Oh Brother Where Art Thou. The Coen Brothers did a fantastic job and this is having an assorted cast of people who are writing music on this and this and there's a lot to list but one particular is the soggy bottom boys which they write for the movie which is the most iconic thing with a man of cox and sorrow which if you've ever seen this movie you should this is one of the best coen brothers movies there is and the the time period they're combining the odyssey with kind of early 1900s americana kind of culture in the south a little bit and it's just it's one of those great things that just the dialogue and the music collide so well together and it honestly there's some comical moments involved in the music that just involves um, some drama as well and some just high chase kind of you know schemes that are going on it's it's just a great film in general and also the soundtrack and so this is coming from somebody who does not like bluegrass nor does he like country but this is a combination of bluegrass blues kind of folk music country Americana there's so many cool things in, in this soundtrack uh, alone, just because I love this, the source material itself and the Coen brothers, that I can look past my bias towards country and bluegrass. So I would definitely highly recommend this. At least watch the movie and then listen to the soundtrack. You can do both, either or. But I would highly recommend this movie. So let's move on from Oh Brother Where Art Thou, which is my only soundtrack on the entire list. So let's move on to the score again. All right, my next movie is The Fountain. This score floored me every time I've seen this. I've seen this movie about four or five times and I really pace this out because I, I really love this movie. It's another Darren Aronofsky movie that I really enjoy and the score is is by Clint Mansell and he has done actually a couple things for him. He's done Requiem for a Dream but The Fountain is one of those movies that I've seen four or five times in my life and I really pick it out and try to pace it throughout my life because it's one of those movies that I really just really enjoy. It's also really short but also just seems everlasting. Just like I was talking about with Interstellar, it plays a lot with temporal, spatial um, relations, uh, particularly with Hugh Jackman and Rachel Wise. They're having this relationship and it transcends three different time periods and the music just accents it so well. There's a lot of piano involved. There's lovely piano interludes with a lot of strings. This is, this is a very heavy on the piano and strings and it just builds and builds and builds and it has a, a beautiful climax and that's something about this movie that just, it kind of just leaves me breathless every time I think about this movie and the score that comes along with it. There's some great moments about this movie that are very visual, but also sonically, it's just, it's so gorgeous and it just complements each other so well. So I definitely highly recommend The Fountain. I can't talk about it enough. Let's move on to one of the best known franchises of all time. And that is Star Wars, baby, it's Star Wars. And yeah, I'm singing like Bill Murray. Uh, so we have Star Wars, and I, this is by John Williams, and I actually have the big giant vinyl collection. This is the first six right here. Um, it's great. Ugh. I also have the movies right here. This is just the first six. I have seven and Rogue One up there somewhere. But anyway, Star Wars, John Williams, how iconic is the soundtrack? This is just one of the greatest movies of all time and franchises. And the score alone just speaks for itself. If you just hear Star Wars, you can probably hear the Imperial March or the Star Wars theme in your head, or even the Cantina Band, that fun, jazzy kind of song that just sticks in your head. John Williams did a fantastic job here and has continued to do a fantastic job with almost each iteration of the Star Wars franchise with Duel of the Fates in episode one and also episode three. They're just, it's so beautiful and so gorgeous. But you can really tell this epic struggle between good and evil, the dark side and the light side, the Sith versus the Jedi. And the music complements that so well. It's just this, it's just, it's this build of epicness that just continues to, you know, to build up. And also there's a lot of this down moments as well. It's all over the place. It's this giant space odyssey. And that's something about Star Wars that I really enjoy. And something I really enjoy about John Williams here and his score. He has made this iconic franchise, John Williams, on top of George Lucas, and they can just continue it today. And honestly, I cannot wait for Ryan Johnson, speaking of him earlier on Brick, uh, and his iterations. So let's move on from Star Wars, because I'm sure you've all known about this. So I'm going to move on to one of the other biggest franchises of all time, and they're actually my favorite movies of all time, but not my favorite score. Ah yes, the holy grail of movies for me, The Lord of the Rings. I cannot tell you how much I love this movie. 
and I've actually been holding off telling, talking about this movie almost at all costs because I have just I have lists I can just read uh, just a whole giant list to you from my notes of what this is. Lord of the Rings to me is so good. Uh, Howard Shore did the score for this this mo these movies, and I love every iteration he's done. There's so many epic moments in this movie in the entire trilogy. It floors me how it goes good and evil back and forth. You could just see the tension build up throughout the entire franchise because obviously there's this horrible thing about to happen to these unexpected uh, kind of people like you know the hobbits who are just kind of living their own life and just trying to just exist and it's the same with the elves in Lothorian and also in Rivendell and that's something that I think that Howard Shore and also obviously Peter Jackson did a fantastic job of really portraying that battle between good and evil and some of my highlights of this of this movie that I really enjoy are some of the things from Fellowship. The Bridge of Kazakh Doom is one of my favorite songs from the Fellowship. It's it's the epic kind of song that kind of just reminds me of the entire franchise. It's the song that goes the very very beginning. Dun dun na 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 and it just builds from there and it gets even more darker and darker as it gets deeper and deeper into Moria. It's an epic song with just epic you know, orchestra and also just choral kind of chants that's going on. It's a combination of all these horns and these string instruments and these drums and it's just so pounding and it just gets bigger and bigger. And there's also the, a lot of the quieter moments too. So if I'm moving on from there to Two Towers, one of my favorite songs is Even Star, which is Arwen's song. Arwen trying to contemplate if she wants to go to the Undying Lands with her her father Elrond and all the other elves, or stay behind with Aragorn, and that's something that she's trying to decide herself, and that's one of those songs that's kind of melancholic in nature. It's a happy, sad song. But moving on from there, let me talk to you about Return of the King, one of the you know uh, greatest bookends of a uh, trilogy I've ever seen. Um, there's one particular song, especially sung by Pippin. It's the Steward of Gondor, and it's just it's such a great song, and obviously it takes itself out of the score. But it accents it so well because it just it just shows such a tragic moment um, between Faramir, Denethor, and and Pippin himself. Just this really sad moment that you just really have to sit back and take. And the music just really accents that entire experience. So let me talk, stop talking about Lord of the Rings. I can tell you all the things about this. Howard Shore did a fantastic job here. Like I said, with a lot of the score, there's a lot of building up and a lot of really relaxed parts as well with the Hobbit, Hobbiton, and the Shire. There's all these really nice interludes and stuff. It's kind of folksy, but sometimes it gets really epic and really orchestrated with some of the things like Brezik Kazak Doom or just finding the Urukai, all sorts of things. So Two Towers and Return of the King and The Fellowship of the Ring, these are my favorite movies of all time, but what score beats that? Oh, I remember. It's Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth. Javier Navarrete is my one of my this is one of my favorite scores I've ever heard in my entire life. Obviously, it's my number one, and so I actually just recently got this uh, edition. It's the Criterion, and I'm just really proud I have this. I also have a, a poster of Pan's Labyrinth over there. His score is just so beautiful. It's a melancholic kind of sco score. It really accents this dark fairy tale, and that's something that I really enjoy about it. Is it mixes strings, piano instruments, woodwinds. And it sometimes drums, and it just makes it this epic kind of tale, but it's also really sad as well. There's a lot of reality um, and fantasy colliding here in this movie, and that's something that I really love. If you haven't noticed, fantasy is one of my favorite styles, and I would say that the scores in fantasy are usually really epic. I love epic music that just really plays on, plays on my emotions, but also the, a lot of the downtrodden music especially in Pan's Labyrinth. Javier Neverett did a fantastic job here. And also, not just to mention, Mercedes Lullaby. This is the, the opening track, honestly, a long, long time ago, with the little girl who's just humming, um, but I can't do it very well. I, I'll attempt it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to be that good. Regardless, um, it's just super iconic, and also just it's this tragic kind of tale uh, between the Spanish Civil War that's going on and also this this little girl Ophelia and uh, meeting this fawn and 
you know, pretty much being promised to be the, this queen of this this fantastical world. Kind of this escapism kind of film, and the score just accents super well. So those are my top ten favorite scores of all time, with one being a soundtrack, but I digress. I want to hear your thoughts down below on what my score picks were. I, I was really, this is really hard to do. I did a lot of research for this one because I actually have a lot of notes on it myself. I actually had to look at it a couple times and I apologize for that because normally I just talk to you in the camera, you guys, and memory. But I digress. I want to hear your thoughts down below. Give me a like, comment, and don't forget to share. And also, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. I'm not jonesing around.